guest, Eric Asalda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday, 9 a.m. This is a whole hour of Santa Barbara teen athletes and all those people and businesses that support those teen athletes. I am so excited. We've got every co-host, I think, on the show here today because I got scared because we have a couple of guests, which is great. But, you know, say we're having a co-host reunion in Hawaii because it's, I mean, we had our birthday, five-year birthday. And for all of those co-hosts that didn't know it's our five-year birthday, guess what, guys? It's our five-year birthday. Uh, Laura, somebody dropped off something. We got a something, something. Who's, we who's have a kid? What, what do you got? Laura, what do we got? What do we got? Yes. So our dear friend Beverly Bev, not Beverly Beverly We love Beverly Yeah Yes Oh my god I thought I said the wrong name for a no. second I was like what No um, No she gave me something to treasure And I'm going to do that huh? I'm going to keep it safe Okay Because they're amazing button cakes Nice Open them up Let's see Get the first one to Dr. Energy You know she came in Walked she in a little it, yeah. A little oh, cranky yeah. this morning and Dr. Energy walked in It was a little cranky By the way yeah. Has anybody been been to her shop? No. I have. I it have. is a fantastic. My wife loves it. Oh, nice. Absolutely fantastic. Nice, nice. I cool. didn't even know. I love it when something's free and she ties it down like it's Fort Knox, like you know, because <laughs> it's chocolate. I please God be chocolate. But then as soon as I open it up, I want to say, what is this going to say? Bahamas. I can't go. I can't have it. Hey, uh, every time I see chocolate, Bahamas. Go? I'm going to Bahamas in two open months. It. Bahamas. Stop I said, closing it. Stop Just closing. leave it open. All right, fine. Here you go. Yay! Take one. Oh yeah. Doctor Energy. Go. Go ahead. Doctor Energy May first. Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking my coffee right now. Uh, I'll pass on the sugar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone, no, I, I see nose. You get out of here. No way. Angela Miller Bevin, Fairview Garden. She goes, I'm not going to say no. I'll you have know. a butt cake. That's it. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We got Dr. Dale Figtree. Put your hands oh, together. She says, Dale, Woo! Yeah. Yes. She's handing me a healthy nutritional book. She says, I'm going to take me a mini bun cake. Oh, Michael Baker almost knocked her out to get a bun cake. Hey, CEO of United Boys and Girls Club. All right. Be here. On the back here, we got Steve Stokes. Put your hands together. Woo! How you doing, Steve? All right. I think I hit everybody. No, I didn't. The one is hiding in the corner. Okay. Lori Cortez wants a bun cake. Put your hands together. Owner of College Coaching. Welcome right. to the bun cake hour. <laughs> yeah. Everybody get one. No, go. I don't because well, okay. we're gonna pass. You know, you have to be alone with this icing. It's <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. That's awesome. All right, we've got a lot to go over, but I, I promise you're gonna toss the ball here over to Michael Baker first because Michael A, I uh, what you have done with the club and turning around is amazing. And I know it's a wee thing, and I'm just really honored. Um, that you're a co-host on the show and when I went we had our alumni meeting over in Goleta and the first thing honestly it, it brought tears to my eyes when I saw a line of like 50 kids getting food and serving food down in Goleta from 4.30 to 6.00 and honestly, that was something that you said you were going to accomplish, and now we're feeding them at all the clubs, and uh, I'm going to let you take over. And I'm, thank you very much, Michael no. Baker. Thank you. Good job. I love it. It's definitely, that's, that's not even a me thing. That's definitely a we, we thing. Definitely. It's a we yeah. thing. Uh, you had Nancy Weiss on the show a yes. couple, couple weeks ago, and uh, she made it happen. She brought the food truck uh, to our Goleta Club, and... Um, if you talk to the club director there, Ashlyn, she said it's what what an impact that makes. I mean, there's kids. Uh, parking lot was packed. Yeah, it, parking lot was packed. And it's gonna it, that's gonna that's gonna be a daily occurrence. Unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so, two of our clubs now have that on a daily basis. So we have it at the West Side in Santa Barbara. We now have a Galita. We will get that eventually. Uh, we'll have dinner. Figure out how we're going to do it, but we'll make partnerships somewhere. We'll have dinner at our Lompo Club as well as our Carpentry Club every day because the need is there. And may you know that. I mean, you're a doctor. You know that. that uh, there's a lot of people that are um, struggling to make ends meet. And I like what you said at the meeting. It's just like it wasn't like when you grew up. You no, know, it's and different. it's true because it's like you know. Sadly, in this country, you know, it, it's the partition between the middle class and the and the lower class has really, you know, broadened. Okay, so like when you're, it's not like I don't know. Talk about it. I can't even talk about it. it hurts me. Well, the, what I always tell people is, I have yet to meet a six year old that's filed for divorce. <laughs> <laughs> or caused domestic violence or abused drugs or made bad financial decisions that have caused their family to live in tough economic situations. 
those are all adult issues and kids are forced to deal with it um, and so we at the Boys and Girls Club feel we have an obligation to level the playing field and there is nothing more basic and simple that we need to do than feeding children um, so um, as I said you know, the other day at the, at the meeting, I don't think it is, it, is it the Boys and Girls Group's responsibility to feed children? No, it's not. But if we don't do it, who, who's going to do it? We, we have to do it. you got to step in. Let's throw some statistics out here. A lot of people don't really realize. I mean, we're in Santa Barbara. We kind of sure. live in, in a bubble. You're not really even, you know, talking so about the numbers. The, the kids around our West Side Club, just at the West Side Club, 97% of those children are in the free reduced lunch program at school. Uh-huh. That means they live on or below uh-huh. the poverty line. Uh-huh. It's in the 80%, I think it's like 82% <coughs> in Goleta. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a huge issue. It's, it's a big, big issue. I taught at, uh, I, I volunteered at Monroe Elementary School, and I would say at least 70% of those kids came in with no breakfast. Right. They were waiting for the lunch to have something to eat, and we're expecting our kids to learn and be valuable contributing members to our society, and we start them off on empty bellies. Dr. Dale, fig trees in the house. Put your hands together. How bad is uh, how bad do kids need to eat, doctor? Well, the word breakfast, what does it mean? Breaking the fast, right? You wake up in the morning and your nutrients are low, and if they're not put in, then you're not functioning 100%. So the body slows down. It's functioning so that there's enough energy to get by, but the best of you is not there. So having good nutrients first thing in the morning is really important. Angela. I can't tell you. I have a son that is nine years old, and it's so wonderful to see at his school at Roosevelt how they are, the schools are feeding the kids in the morning giving them breakfast they're actually giving them snacks now so they don't have to wait all the way until lunch and then at lunch they're getting a lunch and thank God for your program because there, here are all these kids that once they leave the school system they're not getting any food so they're getting to go to the boys and girls club and get fed it really is the the people that deserve the credit are the Nancy Weisses of the world and, and the school district. Nancy Weiss, we love you. I love her. Mount Rushmore, right? That's right. Mount Rushmore. Maybe Mount Weiss. That's Maybe we'll it. make Mount it Mount Weiss. Weiss. I, I can deal with like that. Um, just to just to sh- share with you uh, what's what's really alarming, as I was saying, that uh, the percentage of kids that are going to school that um, uh, there's there's nothing at home and and when you. When the children are on a free breakfast and lunch program at school, that's great Monday through Friday. That's wonderful. And when you grow up poor, I mean, I grew up in welfare. I understand this all too well, that when you get to the weekend and you get to the end of the month and those, t- those things happen to collide, that's a perfect storm, uh, and those kids aren't eating. So if it's Saturday and Sunday and there's no school, there's no breakfast, there's no lunch for those kids, and a lot of them just don't eat. So that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to open on Saturdays. So we open on Saturdays, and we want to eventually want to get get open on Sundays. Yeah, and the big problem is they don't eat good food. That's just what I was saying. But they do eat. And so if they don't get the good food at home or at school, they just eat junk. And then you have these overweight kids with diabetes, with a lot of other worse things. And it's important to get good food in them. Yeah, I watched the kids at the recess, and most of these kids had snacks. But they weren't apples or vegetables. They were hot nachos, these spicy nacho things, and you know, junk food. And that was what they were eating for their first meal. Well, unfortunately, all that junk food is so much cheaper than the good food. Exactly. I mean, even my husband and I, we don't have children, but at the same time, we try to eat healthy, and it's really expensive to eat healthy, and it's mm-hmm. kind of ridiculous that it's mm-hmm. that expensive. <laughs> I think, though, you know, it is expensive, but we're very fortunate because, like, for Fairview Gardens, we're doing organic, you know, teaching organic, how to grow organic, how to eat organic, how to be healthy. And I've been going into stores recently and kind of comparing organic to regular produce. And the price difference is really only like about 10 cents Mm -hmm. per item on a lot of the items. So you are actually able to get organic produce at a much more reasonable price. And we also do a program with... um, with the food bank um, backyard bounty where they have a plot at fairview gardens and they're actually going to be harvesting produce that they will be taking back to the food bank so that food bank will have more organic vegetables to hand out Mm -hmm. and all right michael we we're going to be here for you Uh, i've 
made a little charge here on my street on those Feliz because pretty much everybody has edible, you know, <coughs> landscaping where Excuse I live. So when I see like two or three apples on the ground, you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> pick up those apples. You know, I mean? you know, because honestly, if everybody just started, you know, maybe if we give them everybody like little baskets or United baskets and, you know, fill them up with food because it's all fruit. Because I'd rather, much rather have like is exactly what Dr. Dale said, you know, give them the good stuff. They don't have to have the stuff in a bag. You can give it from the ground. Mm-hmm. You it know, doesn't go to waste. Like, I that, can promise most you that. Definitely. Any food that comes you to the might want, okay, so that the food, we, we, we got a handle on that. What else can we help the United Boys and Girls Club with? Cause and we where do here. we deliver the food? Yeah. Where, any, well, you can go okay. to unitedbg.org, look at our club locations. Uh, they're all listed there. So uh, your nearest club, if it's something you want to help with, we certainly encourage that. Um, what else do we re- need? The, big, the biggest need right now is, as you know, we're really focusing on trying to get to those kids that can't get to the Boys and Girls Club through no fault of their own. And we want to make sure that we're picking them up and bringing them to and from the facilities. Um, we have wonderful vehicles. Uh, we have we have twenty three vans. One of them has Teen Sports Radio. Yes, it does. Baby. yes, it does. That's right. And uh, as you can imagine, the the cost to maintain those vehicles is pretty astronomical, and that's money that could be spent on programming for kids. So if there is a listener out there uh, that has a shop that would be willing to um, for we'll put their logo all over our van our vans um, to maintain the vehicles for our for our for our uh, organization that would go a long long way to help us uh, reach even more kids and and spend those dollars in the clubs I got goosebumps right now I don't know why <laughs> I got goosebumps okay good. it always happens I, it, I mean why. whenever like you always say you throw it out there and people listen and and, and uh, angels come forward so uh, we're really uh, looking for someone uh, an organization that's willing to step up and help us with that that's a big need great all right Dr. D's been saying for five minutes now we got to take a break <laughs> Dr. D we want to say we love you hi Dr. D oh. hello <laughs> thank you for all the new commercials you're welcome everybody loves them I love them, too. Okay, uh, and we've got Beverly coming in with Nothing Bunt Cakes. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I love, my favorite commercial, i got to say, is the Sourdough Bread Lady. Oh, yeah. Tell me yeah. that she did it. She's called One Take. One okay? Take. One, it, it, one minute it took, well, i got to say, yeah. I, we, she had a little tutelage. All right. Dr. Energy, absolute, a little yeah, tutelage, there you go. right? It was awesome. If you think her Russian accent was there, let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> the syntax was equal to it. <laughs> Until we awesome. fixed it. <laughs> uh, sourdough bread lady at gmail.com. That's if it. you want some great bread. Yeah. All right, so let's let's um, take a break. Mm-hmm. All right. This is Eric Gasol. We got a lot of shows. Stay t- tuned for more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Eric Asalda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in. Every single Tuesday. 9 a.m. All right. Who can I go pick on? I'm not going to pick on Laura. I'll pick on Dr. Mae Chandler. You know where else you can find us? Look at that mouth drop. (laughs) Okay. YouTube, Instagram, Uh, Facebook. Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Teensportsradio.com. Yahoo. I mean, that's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, there's one I'm missing. Not so, Probably not LinkedIn. Uh, tweet? Oh, no, Tweeter. 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 Oh, Whatever it's called. Twitter. 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 Okay. <laughs> she's a doctor, folks. Nice okay. work. I love the social <laughs> media blast. Her realm, she's really good. She knows her stuff. It's got oh. Exactly. <laughs> hey, I, we did get a couple of um, shout outs to Slash Show. It was awesome show. It was really good. I want to thank um, Mike Maloney. He had sent over some uh, pics of his beautiful daughters, Tiana and Bella. Put your hands together. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, and Sylvie, for all you do in the community. We love you. Um, I got every time I, I I say his name, Mike. I mean, I, I got I bust up. See, um, I coached his daughter, and the in Galita, they were kind enough to let us um, during the season use the courts if it, if it got was getting kind of wet. So. Anyway, I ended up, you know, getting the keys and I never gave them back. So we had, <laughs> that's pretty much how I do things. Um, and Michael knows that. Um, uh, but I don't have the keys anymore, but we'll talk about that later. Um, 
so I, we had the parents playing against the kids because, you know, that's what I like to do. And then when the kids did something great, the parents had to do push-ups, and I like to do that, too. It's really funny. Um, but I got to say this one time when Mike was under the boards, he was going to thought he'd put up for easy layup. And, and his daughter, and he was doing a little couple of head fakes, one, two, and his daughter was like, came in like a pterodactyl and absolutely swooped and just tomahawked him. Mike, you got tomahawked. All right? And the facial expression that he had, because she wasn't like Meek when she first came in, but more of, more of a volleyball player. But then she just became this just, oh, beast under the boards. And to this day, when I hear his name, I just can't stop laughing. So anyway, thank you for one of those magic co- coaching moments. I wanted to say that. And then... um a bunch of more texts from everybody out there. So we're really feeling the love. So I just want to thank everybody again. We hit our five-year mark, and um, it's really grown into a really – I'm having a great time, and I think all the co-hosts are having a great time as well. So thank you again, Santa Barbara. We love you. Um, let's get to – Put your hands together, Lori Cortez. <laughs> Woo! College Coaching Services. Hey, it's great to see you again, Erica, and everybody. It's yeah. been a, it's been a little while, so it's great to be here. We love you. So today's date. I always I'm, I'm out of it today. What what day is what today is it? The tenth. Tenth. The tenth of, of May. May. Okay. So good. It's great if you're a senior. It's great if you're a senior, (laughs) especially if you're a college bound senior, because that means you've already committed to the school of your choice. So May 1st was the was the uh, submit date. So I certainly hope that everybody accepted to the college of their choice. And seniors, remember, you cannot get senioritis. You need to keep those grades up because you have to submit your final transcript to your college. And I know you will. Juniors, you are on the hot seat now. You are all working on all of your testing, whether it's SAT. ACT, AP, subject tests. I know that you're preparing for and taking those tests multiple times. I know that you are keeping your grades up too. Uh, Junior, your grades are extremely important. So you're probably in the process of studying for finals right now. Remember, uh, study hard. Junior, your grades are looked upon extremely hard, extremely um, rigorously. Also, no matter if you're a freshman, a sophomore, or a junior, continue developing your resume. The colleges love to see that you are um, choosing activities in the area of your interest and that you are adding depth to your resume. So you don't just want to go out and join you know, 10 or 15 organizations because you think they look good on college applications. You want to join things that, are, that matter to you and that you will make a difference in the community, much like they're doing here at Teen Sports Radio. So you, you want to make sure that you are... Um, Focusing your efforts, if you're a, if you're an athlete, then consider coaching younger children in the community. If you know if you're an artist, consider volunteering at art camps for for community youth. There are many things out there where you can tie your community service into your areas of passion. Nice. So. Great to see everybody. We love Lori. No, I love being here. <laughs> How come you're not eating your little buntini? I'm saving it for dessert. <laughs> Save, but it sure looks delicious. It? Oh, come on. As soon as you get in the car and start it. Rah, 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 rah. I can see yeah, this. Probably. You're trying to be really like, nice. You want another one? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you're so, <laughs> you're so uh, cute. Have you ever heard life is short, eat dessert first? Yes, yeah, I have heard exactly. that. Exactly. I, right. I follow that motto yes, quite often. So Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. I want to turn the mic over to Angela Miller Bevan, Fairview Garden. Yay! Yay! Your guest is here. Thank goodness. We love you. So I brought Meg, who is a student out at UCSB. She's a freshman, and I met her um, about a month ago. And she is is involved with an organization that I think that is very interesting and really something that all of us should know about out in the community, and it's called Adventures in Caring. So I'm going to let Meg tell you a little bit about her organization. All right. Thank you, Angela. (laughs) All right. So Adventures in Caring was started in 1985 by Karen Fox when she decided to dress up as Raggedy Ann and go and talk to patients at Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital. And now, 32 years later, there are over 100 volunteers and we've served over, we serve 12 um, hospitals or skilled nursing homes all over the Santa Barbara area. We all dress up as Raggedy Ann or Raggedy Andy um, and we volunteer our time and it's the highlight of my week every week. I go on Saturdays. <laughs> so we, I, when I, I was fortunate enough to um, meet Meg when she had her Raggedy Ann costume on and I can't even 
imagine how wonderful it must be for these people to be in their situation and then have this happy young girl come in and just spend time with them. And what are some of the things that you talk about when you go in? Well, there's a a statistic that I have that up to 80% of patients at skilled nursing homes don't have any visitors. And that can be really hard when your body stops working, but your mind still works and there is no pill for loneliness the only pill is compassion um so at adventures in caring we're taught um acceptance affection attention and acknowledgement but mostly compassion um i've i have had some wonderful talks with some very dear friends of mine um One of my friends, her first date with her husband was they danced all night to Les Brown and his band of renown in the 40s. And another one of my friends lived at the base of the mountain of the Hollywood Land sign. Um, And she would climb up there every day after school. And another of my friends has lived on every continent, which is what I want to do in my life. Um, And I just love hearing their stories and I love telling them about my life. And I think that I that we both enrich each other's lives a lot. Yeah. How can uh, how can we add more Raggedy Ands and more Raggedy Andys to the crew? That is a great question. I would recommend going online to adventuresandcaring.org. Um, and we're always looking, at, most of the volunteers are undergraduate, um, undergraduate students at UCSB, um, and most of them want to go into the medical profession. So we're planting the seeds of compassion to help with bedside manner, um, to the new the newest generation of medical professions but it's not only for medical dreamers because I'm a global studies major um, I want to do the Peace Corps um, and I think this is a really interesting thing that I can bring into my own life and that all my friends can bring into everyone's lives that they know absolutely nice. so so I have a question um, Whenever you talk, because I actually go to Casa Durenda. Have you heard of Casa Durenda? Mm-hmm. It's one of the, and Samarkand and Via Verde. Um, I go there once a month to do routine care for patients. And it's wonderful because, you know, you start talking to them, like you were saying, and you hear their stories, and it's it's just so different from now, you mm-hmm. know, than it was then. But they still live in now, too. So how... You know, in a hundred years, when we're at that point, um, how different life is going to be, right? Mm-hmm. It's just—it's absolutely amazing. But I will say, sometimes I leave extremely sad. Does yes. that ever happen to you? And yes. how do you deal with it? I—I I know that when I come and visit people, I'm a spark of light, hopefully, in their lives, and I know that all of my conversations end with both of us feeling happy and lighter, Um, but it's hard for me sometimes to leave them and knowing that I won't see them for a week and to know that, that they're just going on with their monotonous schedule, hoping that a family member will come and visit them, knowing that they probably won't come and visit them because life gets in the way. So I really look forward to coming every week. Wow, you're getting all, you're making me cheery. Stop now. (laughs) Stop it. I only have toilet paper in the car. Stop it. (laughs) There's no tissues. This is awesome. Go ahead, Laura. No, uh, I just noticed that you actually talk about him as your friends, and I feel like that's like the key thing yeah. in compassion. Because most of the people, when they do these kind of things, they say, "Oh, the patients, the patients," mm-hmm. and you actually said, "My friends," and so that that's what actually got me. That's really nice. That's like you really you can tell that you are really involved in this and that you really enjoy it. Thank you. We we all went through a really rigorous weekend long training. Um, where we learned advanced listening skills. And I, it, it teaches us to open our hearts and just let them talk about whatever they want to talk about, their childhood, their experiences now, what they're dealing with, with their lives and their homes. And it's impossible to not become super close with everyone I talk to using oh this God. strategy that I use now with every conversation I have. Meg, we love you. <laughs> hey, check out adventuresandcaring.org. You got to take a break, all right? Uh, amazing, uh, amazing. This is Erica Salter, the Queen of Teen. We'll be back with more after these messages. So 
Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. Oh, I still got every time. I don't know. When something touches me, I get the goosebumps. I mean, I got a doctor sitting next to me. I'm going to be okay, right? Yeah, I'm, you're you're fine. You're in good hands. Well, at least your feet are in good hands. They're <laughs> great. Hey, you're the only doctor that fixed my feet. It's true. I had bad feet for two years before you look. Erica, we're getting one one boot. One boot? Well, you want two boots? I, I Well, if I was going to do it, I might as well get it done. I was on two <laughs> boots for like two months. It was, a, and hey, it worked though. She shut, shut down. That's what she said. Shut, I got, oh, I was great. You know, I really worked it too, Dr. D. You would do this if I was to, help, help. Anytime I needed something, I walked really slow. I actually was in on a deposition. I can't believe it. I saw nine attorneys just move like I parted, you know, the Red Sea. It was great. <laughs> need a little help. Need a little help. And I was just, I mean, I was walking like four you know, da, 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 da. you know, you know, Forrest Gump, get it? No. Okay, only one person. Thank you, Laura from Italy got it. I got it. Thank you, from Italy I think she I gets heard it. Crickets. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> funny. Wow, that was really funny. All right, in the house, put your hands together. I got a great story to share. We got Nikki Ayers, owner of Ayers Repairs. It was the funniest thing. So, Coincidentally, we have the same web person, okay? So my web guy goes, hey, I want you to check out this new site I did for Airs Repairs. I'm like, who? Airs Repairs. I said, okay. So I checked it out, and he totally baited me into this, and I see this contest because Erica, you know, Erica loves free. Always, okay? <laughs> so I had to reach out because I cheated. Nikki's looking at me. Nikki, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know the answer, but I really know a lot of people that would have known the answer. <laughs> this reminds me back in college when I had to know what the second guy to climb Mount Everest, idiot me because we didn't have tech back then. I drove to you. CLA to find out, okay, to, to go to the library, all right? So, uh, Tenzik Norhe, if anybody wanted to know, that was a good thing for your <laughs> thing. Uh, you remember certain things when you're 19. All right, so I found out who invented, uh, so it was a, what was invented a certain year. It was a tea bag, okay? Thank you, Laura, because she knows how to do the Siri, <laughs> go Google, all that kind of thing, so I love Laura. So then we started to talk, and then he goes, you know, did you talk to her? I said, no, but I'm going to get something. Oh, bam, I win the free oil change. So John John comes up from Santa Barbara or San Diego and he goes, Mommy need oil change. So you can't get oil changes in Santa Barbara on a Saturday. Do you know that? Most places are closed. Unless you want to play dealer and I'm not going to do that. So I called Nikki. Uh, you know, they don't do it on Saturday yet. She's paused. She goes, you know something? Let me see if I can get a mechanic. I said, great. Calls me back. I'll see you tomorrow at eight. I'm like, you just got to be kidding me. I figured because of Robert Burroughs, you know, she's being nice to me because of him, not because she's nice. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, I didn't know she, I, she's as nice as she was. I go there and meet her husband's just as nice, okay? Guess who's working on my car? A girl. I was just sh awesome. I already like this and place. She is awesome. <laughs> she's, this girl moves. I was die was parched. She ran and got the water for me. I mean, she's like the nicest person. I don't know if you're ever gonna do like the review. I don't maybe she's been there for years. She is a rock star. She is so good. I've never seen anybody take the tires like, woo, 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 woo. tires flying off. I'm like boom, boom, boom. I said, gonna get that tires going down the street. Not as hell. But it was like it was like, no, I was kidding. But you know, then and then Robert was telling me all the these things about what you do in the community then I checked out your Facebook page more and oh my gosh you know you are you guys have been around for such a long time I sh because I'm more kind of in the Galita area but Nikki the stuff that you do in the community and I'm gonna let you share it right now but and then reaching out to our kids and our teens and we have Michael Baker in the house and I'm like oh my god this is just I'm get I got goosebumps so Nikki I, I'm gonna let you share but thank you first of all thank you for fixing my son's car on a Saturday okay? you're welcome and just thank you for being you so how long let's let's start from the beginning how long have you been around I've been, Robert and I have been in business 38 years. So 38 some. years. <laughs> we went to the alumni deal, right? How many people in there? 25? I go, is anybody Michael Baker have heard of airs? Because this is Galita. <laughs> now, I know you're just killing it off of the whole Japala area. But, you know, Santa Barbara is a big, it's a big city. It's not like you could say anybody who's Erica. Erica who? Like, you know, Dr. Energy. Oh, everybody knows Dr. Energy. You know, I'm, I'm, this is not about me. Okay. But, right? And, and I said, what did right. I say? Now, everybody's going to know about airs. Because I told the whole story about what you did well, for my son. Well, thank you. Well, it was sweet. Can I talk about another topic, though? Sure. Okay. I got a project that I'm working on. On July 9th, oh. my, my association, the Independent Automotive Professionals Association, does a thing called Blow Your Motor Night. And... <laughs> <laughs> I like the name already. It's it's it's, it's a blast. This is our. I'm our, in. <laughs> it's the eleventh year that we've done this, and it's going to be out at 
at the Elks about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's the first year we've gotten to do it on a Saturday. But what we do is we blow up engines on cars and we take bets to see how long it takes to blow up the engines. It's a lot of fun. And the money... <laughs> like you're setting them on fire? See no, 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 no. <laughs> we, start, we start them and we see how long it takes. We drain the oil out of the engines on these cars and we see how long it takes to blow the engines up. And of course we do... Fun things along with that. Hoods fly off. Things fly out. Oh, wow. it's, it's a lot of fun. That's July what? July 9th. <laughs> Why I love America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, and we do other crazy things like we blow up airbags and, and, uh, and we have um, a tri-tip dinner and all that kind of stuff. We have a band and all sorts of things. How did that start? Um, actually, I started it um, 11 years ago, and I stole the idea from somebody else. And uh, we've been raising money to do scholarships, which we gave away $4,000 last night wow. um, to high school students who are in the automotive program and at City College. So we've been doing that for 11 years now, and uh, that's my association in town. There's about um, 100 members from Paso Robles down to Carpinteria. And it's a lot of fun, and we'd love to have more people in the community start to attend. And uh, that's who's, my gig. Whose cars are you blowing up? Yeah, no, I <laughs> keep going back to this blow up. Do you need to blow up? Like, are they old engines that you're They're blowing cars up? cars that people don't want anymore. And so you need to blow them up? We order. don't need to blow uh, them up. I didn't know you if don't it was need like to, I didn't know if it was like part of not? the demolition or something. No, 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 no. They just they they sit still because we can't drive them, and they're. Oh, okay. um, There's a federal law that requires. <laughs> no, but it's just it's just crazy. And how it's many just, fire trucks are going to be out there? Um, <laughs> I don't know. We've never had a, and we've never had an incident. So and we we everybody who's involved is in protective gear and things like that. I want to talk about you don't you don't want to share. I mean, I saw this on your Facebook page that you got together um, and it partnered with other businesses in town to help a, a family. Want right. to talk about that? Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Um, well, I had a f- um, call from uh, the pediatric oncology um, what, uh, department. department, and there was a family that needed a van or a car because they needed to take their son down to. Um, not UCLA, but um, I can't think of it. No, the other one. (laughs) Yeah, because City of Hope. And he needed to have a stem cell transplant. And so um, that was in November, and I needed to find something because they had four children, and we needed to find a car that would fit all of them. So um, I started looking for a car, and we, we got a van donated, and the van was in terrible condition so we actually rebuilt the van and um, it took us three months to do it but we got the van rebuilt and uh, I raised money with all of the other shops in town that was one that took a village to do (laughs) wonderful (laughs) yeah so um, he's down at City of Hope right now God bless him definitely God bless you guys well, how can okay? So somebody's listening to this and say, "Hey, I want to meet Nikki." So, what's your give us contact information because you have more than one location. Oh, I have two shops: one at the corner of Chapala and Victoria, and one down in the Funk Zone at two twenty Anacapa Street. Nice. So, thank you. I appreciate thank being you. Check invited. out our Facebook page. Real quick, I just wanted you to know that my um, nine-year-old son loves your commercials. Oh, so, thank you. Yes, we know all the words. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's been around a long time. Get us together with Nikki Airs, Airs Repairs. We gotta take a quick break. We'll be back with more after these messages. <laughs> We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Team Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Eric Asalda, the Queen of Team. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. When are Out, we on? Uh, well, Terry Coopy, why don't you tell us <laughs> when else we on? We're on other times. Okay. you got to get closer to so, the mic. Don't know. I don't remember. We're on at 11. We are right on, on Twitter. Thursday. We are on Twitter. No, no, no. With the times. Oh, We're on no, four no. times a, a 9 week. 9 a.m. Yeah. 11 p.m. on Tuesday. I'm Sunday, just checking if you can read my morning, mind. Right? Is Sunday. That? No. Let, let me finish. Okay. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm trying here. Dr. Energy, you are spooking me right now. <laughs> All the spirits have left the building. Uh, 3 p.m. on Sunday. Or actually, it's 2 p.m. on Sunday and 3 a.m. on Monday. Thank you, Dr. D, for the head knobs, for the approval. That's really good. Now, I'm confused. Okay, we're back now. Uh, and I'm really excited. But thanks for asking. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really excited. And we've got Steve Stokes in the house. Put your hands together. You can't say enough about your school. So we will pass on because we know they dropped the hall. But you've got a beautiful girl in the house. We do. We okay. do. We have a, uh, we have a sophomore. Uh, she was the captain of our girls' bas- our league championship girls' basketball team. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of a lot of hanging banners this year at Providence, and this was another one. Um, she was a MVP of the girls' basketball team, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have Monica Lopez here today, and uh, she's running for a leadership position at our school right now as well. Nice. You want to tell us a little bit about that, Monica? Sure. So. I'm applying for the prefect of, like, the athletic prefect at the school, so I just actually had my interview today with Coach Stokes, <laughs> and um, I actually, coming in as a freshman, I thought it was going to be, like, something that I wanted to do, but um, you can't, like, as a coming in freshman, you can't apply, so I kind of just, like, was friends with the person that's doing it now just to kind of see what she does and um, see what it entails, and I really liked what like what she did all year she brought in fca this year and i thought that was really cool so i just really enjoyed it so i figured i'd go for it and see what happens why don't you tell me what fca stands for oh boy fellowship of christian athletes <laughs> there, you, there go. you go yeah that's <laughs> not what i was gonna say it's a good thing <laughs> yeah what are you gonna say i don't even know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was. It's been really cool. They um, they bring in new speakers like almost every week. So, so, oh, so what is this position you are um, you are applying for? It is it. What is um, this? It's basically like, um, well, you so you like promote the teams um, of whatever season it's in, and like talk about sports, and you basically let the student body know what's going on with athletics do you do it like through a newspaper or the radio or um we have um there's these things called all school meetings on monday where we let all of the the student body know and then on chapel on wednesdays we also let them know as well i think a great way to describe it would would be uh she's basically as an athletic director she's basically my intern okay in a lot of ways that's a, that's a yeah. Good job. yeah. So it's basically a full time job that you would have to do like all week long, or are there certain meetings like once a week or twice a week? How does it work? Like, um, Coach Stokes actually just filled me in on this today. <laughs> um, <laughs> that um, I think it's like once a few we- every few weeks or something. I meet with him and see what's going on um, and what I have to talk about. Um, but yeah, I pretty much do it whenever needed. Um, so it could be like all week, or it could just be like a few days a week. Do you see this as something that's going to prepare you for your future career? Um, I think so. I think it would be, um, I think I don't think it can hurt me in any way. I think it'll just be beneficial. Well, we just had college sure. coaching sure. on, right? This is something that would look <laughs> good in a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. And how many sports do you guys have at your school that you will need to be responsible to talk about? Um, so, like, boys volleyball, girls volleyball, boys and girls basketball, track and field and I don't know if there's any there's seven teams <laughs> seven, okay, seven. seven teams on campus yeah, yeah. So. well looking forward for your basketball team next year I mean any predictions for next year because you're going to have to be str- as strong if not stronger right just like the boys they're returning everybody so yeah it's nice it'll be good yeah that is going to be awesome yeah. fantastic so who's going to be your biggest competition next year um I I'm not sure because you know, a bunch of some seniors leave from other schools. My guess like is... What's your biggest rival? Is it Laguna? Is Laguna, Laguna your big thing? Laguna doesn't have a girls team. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Really? They're yeah. out. Huh. Um, maybe sometime Coastal Christian. You personally, who's yeah. your biggest? I don't like this school. Like, I, mean, I can't say that because you're like, whatever. <laughs> but, you know, I, I you know, you drive boys, up... It's really easy. It's well, Laguna, it's, it's, but... It's, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's energy. You know, I'm just uh, saying I, I just don't, don't like it. I don't know if we... I don't know if we really have one of those schools. One one school that's like kind of harder for me to play is um, Dunn. They have a lot of energy, so I kind of have to like 
pump myself up for that girl, game. The girls have developed a little bit of a rivalry from a smaller school in, in Arroyo Grande, Coastal Christian there. Yeah, They're Coastal usually, Christian, the, definitely. Both teams are ranked in the top ten usually, and um, every time they play, it seems like it's within a point or two. Yeah. So I think they've developed, even though it's not a proximity rivalry, mm-hmm. um, it's a competitive you guys play your games at? Do they play at Westmont? Yep, play at Westmont. Wow, play at Westmont on the big I mean, floor. Jeez, that's Bright amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, is the thing that you're applying for perfect? You said okay. Um, is that going to be like for all the f- next three, two years you have, or do, do you have to reapply each year? How does it work? I'm really, I'm really interested in this thing. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm like ninety percent sure you have to reapply. Um, so, if if I did get the position, I would. Um, have that for junior year and then reapply for her senior year. Nice. Although well, we I hope. Bet you if she was the if she was the prefect for her junior year, she'd have a leg up on the competition yeah. for her senior year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Put your hands together. Fantastic. Well, we're gonna enjoy having you back. How's that? All right. Mm-hmm. All right. But you can stick around as well. We're gonna take a little break. All right. This is Erica Saldo. We've got a lot more. Don't go anywhere. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. We are so blessed, all right, to have Dr. Dale Figtree in the house. Put your hands together. And I'm glad you look good because you didn't come last week because you, you know, had a, you had another owie. You fell. <laughs> <laughs> this is not this, Why am I laughing? That's mean to laugh <laughs> when you know, fall and hurt yourself. Okay. Why are you laughing, Dr. Energy? It is, it's America's Funniest Home Videos exactly. on Teen Sports Radio. It's exactly. called Schadenfreude. What? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's the pleasure from seeing utter failing. Oh, in German. Yes, but it's an international term. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's used Schnitzel for literature. <laughs> Schadenfreude. <laughs> You're supposed to know how to say this. I did. I know how to do that. All right, Dr. Dale Figtree, listen, I, I had. I wanted you to do something last week, and I hope you remembered to, if you could share some, you know, wisdoms. We're about health, and we're about wellness, and it's all about kids. So maybe you could give a couple of, um, you know, I think the two sure. things, you know. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah. uh, well, you you're know, the doctor? Yeah. Well, let me just start out by saying <clears throat> that the standard American diet, which is like SAD, SAD, right? The initials, um, unfortunately, is the norm. And there are a few hints I want to make to really uh, upgrade it. And um, most people, especially kids, when they eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's processed food. You know, whether it's um, cornflakes or whether it's waffles you put in the toaster or, um, or, or orange juice or whatever. Lunch, you know, you grab a sandwich, dinner, pasta, bread, whatever. Um, what's really missing are vitamins and minerals, which are crucial to protect us, give us good energy, help our brains develop well, help our muscles develop well. And um, so my suggestion is... Um, with each meal, to just choose one natural, real, raw food. So for breakfast, it could be an apple or a banana. For lunch, it could be carrots and celery. Um, for dinner, again, something that could be a dessert, which is a piece of fruit, or, um, again, a small salad or whatever. Because these foods that are closest to nature have all of their structure of vitamins, minerals, fiber, the best water money can buy. It's all intact. And people think, well, I'm getting it with a vitamin pill. But the truth is the vitamin pill is processed, and it's really like nothing compared to the real thing. So just to think whatever you're eating, if you can add something real, something raw, something fresh with it, that's a big step in the right direction. Nice. Good advice. I like it. Easy, simple. Easy. That's what I was actually talking about yesterday night with uh, D with Dominique. Uh, we were talking about uh, how here people, when they see that they are missing some sort of vitamin, they go like, oh, I'm buying it from the store. And I'm like, dude, do you know what a salad is? Because they really don't eat vegetables. Like, I see that they have, like, these sandwiches which have, like, ham and cheese, but there's never, like, a leaf of lettuce. Exactly. So exactly. I totally see what you're saying. And... Um, I mean, we already have like a really healthy household, and when you said bananas, like I'm, 
with bananas, Greek yogurt, and chocolate, I'm happy. So yeah, yeah. that's basically my breakfast. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people say to me, I mean, I'll write out a program for them, and they say, well, how about a multivitamin and a mineral? And mm-hmm. I say, if you eat fresh foods, you don't need it. Not only do you not need it, but you're doing so much better than actually if you had the process. I mean, there are certain vitamins and minerals that are important. You can target things. Mm-hmm. Um, you choose them carefully, and you see what's in them. But for a general support, if you're eating well, that's the best support you can get. Yeah. That and people need to, especially children, need to start exercising. They need yeah. to start actually doing something rather than just sitting at home, watching TV, or playing their video games. Because I think that the exercise is really important, too. It's huge. Everything. Sleep, water, exercise, eat your fruits. And then if you want to check in mentally, then you got to see Dr. Energy, okay? Because she just left and she's back now. We have one minute, and I want you to talk about your classes before we break for another week. Thank you. (laughs) I have a class coming up on June 2nd that might be very useful. I think it would be useful, not just to adults, but for teens as well. I'm teaching a class on Mm self-hypnosis. And self-hypnosis is really what got me through college when I had to work. And then I had to come home and study. And um, I would be tired, but I would sit down and practice with self-hypnosis. And within a few minutes, I was energized. So uh, I think it would be a wonderful thing for kids to come on over to the Center for Lifelong Learning, June 2nd. The class is on a Saturday. Love to have you there. Be happy to teach you how to use self-hypnosis. Thank you, Cherry. Dr. Dale, do you have anything coming up? Because we got like 10 seconds. Do you have anything else? Um, Except for saying you're going to be here next week. I'm signing at Alchemy Arts sometime in the next month. I'll let you know the date when that happens. And I'll I'll see you next week. And I'll see everybody here if you could be here next week. Fantastic. Hey, guess what? We're out of time. This is Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. We love Santa Barbara. Make somebody happy today. See you next week. (laughs) 